Until recently, the only stone fields covered all over with ancient vehicle trackways were those of the Phrygian Valley of Turkey. But the new discovery made by Andrei Kuznetsov is even more amazing because the fields he found, at least one of them, is much bigger than anything we have heard about so far. It is 25 by 40 kilometers in size. Yes, 1000 square kilometers covered with petrified vehicle tracks. This is definitely the biggest stone field with tracks we know of. This large new field is located near the Turkish town of Deronkuyu which is already famous with the huge multi-storied rock-cut city, underground city, also found in its vicinity. And this is not by chance, because such tracks are found usually around rock-cut complexes, which were left by this very same civilization, that the ruins of which stretch all the way from Portugal to China. Here on my website I have made the first attempt ever to make an interactive map of at least some of the sites where ruins of this old civilization can be found. Although this list can never be complete because the ruins are so numerous that till date many people still live in them. In Italy I saw that um, hundreds of uh, their uh, road network is still used, covered with asphalt and turned into modern roads. Hundreds of them have been converted to restaurants, hotels, garages and anything else you can imagine. Without a doubt, those rock-cut ruins are found in the greatest concentration in Turkey and they are most impressive over there as well. So, it is not by chance that the largest field with uh, vehicle tracks is found next to the most famous underground city of Dironkuyu. The sheer amount of tracks found in the fields around Dironkuyu by itself makes it highly unlikely, if not absolutely impossible, that they were made by carts who were always traversing the same path, which happens to be the picture that the mainstream history is trying to sell us. Sometimes there will be brief mention that maybe they were carved into the rock, something like rails, but Again, the sheer amount makes that explanation unlikely as well. So again, as in the case with the Phrygian Valley, I think it is obvious that the most likely explanation, if not the only one, is that the tracks were left when this stone was still soft mud. And that is exactly why the mainstream historians pretend that these tracks don't exist, and avoid talking about them, where are the hooves? If these were really carts, then who was pulling them? Or did people in deep antiquity use machines for vehicles the way we do? Oh no, that's sacrilege, we should not think that, we should only think of monkeys in deep antiquity. Sorry, human monkeys. Now, these are images from Spain, one of those rare cases when actually official archaeologists do excavate such fields. Usually they prefer to stay away. In the rare cases when such tracks are being excavated and preserved and taken care of, usually the solution for them is to be declared as being a mystery and this is a polite way to exclude them from our history. Instead of building the history on these artifacts, on these historic sites, they are declared a mystery because they do not correspond to the idea 
that people should have about their history. Now let's get back to Turkey and see what new we can learn from this new discovery. First of all, I see on the images what would a modern historian call a rock-cut road. Why would you need a road if your vehicle is going all around in the mud anyway? I have no clue, but in my videos about uh, the results of the Spain expedition, I showed the absolutely same situation. Tracks on the road and then tracks all around the road as well. And I was asking myself the same in Spain, but now it's becoming more persistent, this question. Uh, is this even a road? Or was it some sort of, a, I don't know, equipment, a bagger that was clearing the mud, the earth away as it was moving, clearing it in front of uh, itself and then leaving the tracks in the middle? Certainly the Derankuyu stone roads, or let's say petrified roads, are not as impressive as those of Italy that I saw this month, because they are not that deep as the Italian ones, but their existence certainly confirms the uniformity of this uh, civilization of the rock-cut ruins, the ruins themselves, um, are not only a rock cut, but they have uh, similar architectural features all over this belt, this region that I'm talking about, and same is valid for the roads. This is yet another stone road from Turkey. Identical ones are found in Jordan, in Germany, Switzerland, France, Spain, of course, Italy, just all over, and that is not to go around some obstacle. It is just the way they made the roads, even when it uh, passes through a perfectly flat terrain. So this is certainly one feature that unifies all these ruins and shows, along with other factors, that they belonged to a single group of people, a civilization that we don't even have name for. And now something else interesting from the findings of uh, Kuznetsov. He found, finally, a couple of uh, traces next to the tracks that could be interpreted as uh, human footprints. Finally, we were always wondering why there are no footprints next to the tracks. So was it really humans who were on these machines or what was it? Anyway, so the scarcity of such footprints, if they are footprints at all, by itself proves that most likely it was uh, some sort of machinery after all. Because footprints can be left in this terrain and if there were animals or people pulling, dragging or something like that, they would have left their footprints. And now the next thing that I find very intriguing, very interesting, are these peculiar quadratic marks imprints. I find it particularly difficult to find any way to connect them with cart rods. And in addition to that, identical tracks are found all over this belt of ruins stretching from the Middle East all the way to Portugal. You can see some of them in my videos about Bocairent and Mecca in Spain. They are just absolutely the same. Here are some from Italy. And as everywhere else, the Turkish ones appear to turn into normal tracks, just like that. Sometimes they are quadratic imprints, then they continue as normal tracks. And then we see these curious marks in the field of tracks. 
If you see this picture separately, you would say, oh, some sort of uh, modern heavy equipment must have passed this way. But actually, when you're on the spot, you will see that they follow the ancient tracks. They are not modern. Also, their erosion uh, degree is absolutely consistent with that of the old tracks. They are definitely not modern. And interestingly enough, uh, we saw very, very similar marks during our recent expedition in Italy. And in the beginning, we were all convinced that this must be modern. But then as we visited more sites, now these are photographs from Italy, we found these marks to be somewhat strange. For example, as they go on the road, they suddenly start to crawl on the walls. And then interestingly enough, we saw them on a narrow path where a modern vehicle could not have passed. It was just... Uh, solid bedrock on both sides, very narrow, like a goat-sized path. So after that spot, we were not so convinced that these are modern. And now when we see very similar marks uh, next to the tracks of uh, Turkey, that means almost for certain that these are not modern. Um, they were identical marks in Mecca in Spain, also on a historic road where bulldozer could not have gone. Some sections of that road were just too narrow for a modern bulldozer. So those who have not seen my videos on the tracks of the Phrygian Valley in Turkey may wonder, aren't these just modern tracks left by some sort of heavy equipment? few decades ago or something like that, they look so modern. If these geological layers were mud during very recent times, because we have heavy equipment, heavy machinery that can leave such tracks since very recently, compared to the time of all history, if this was mud a few decades ago, then we wouldn't have any like historic sites at all. Everything would have been, I don't know, molten or lost in mud, completely covered or basically non-existing. According to mainstream geological opinion, petrification in such open conditions would take ages. I myself think that all geological dating and estimations like this are based on pure fantasy and nothing else. You can see why in my video about the catastrophe um, that supposedly happened 12,000 years ago. But still, I don't deny the relative position of the layers, which means that the lower layers are older than the layers on the top. I think that's common sense. In other words, although I think that uh, we don't know of any reliable method which would help us to put any date to these tracks, and as a matter of fact, even with the ruins associated with them, still in general we can say for sure that they belong to the period we tend to call very deep antiquity. And if you want to keep track of the tracks, then you may consider the video that I'm going to publish very soon. It's about the observations that we made in Italy.